The topic of appropriate diagnoses is an incredibly important one and it's one that in my clinic we take enormous amount of time and care to figure out because as I always say an unexplained diagnosis is not a diagnosis and usually even when it's a partial diagnosis and gen generally you know a partial diagnosis by being told that oh it's egg quality or oh yes it's the sperm but the reality is that many couples with similar situations will conceive even though they've been given the same label and they have been addressed in a in a very specific way. So the reality of it is that when it comes to fertility and or infertility and recurrent miscarriage, it's never about one thing. It's never about you know, this is the problem. Because if it was, you would resolve that problem and you would conceive, or you would be able to find alternatives in resolving that problem and you would conceive. You know, an example is many patients in my clinic come to me after being told it's about egg quality, you have poor egg quality, you will never conceive. And then we go and we find a variety of different reasons as to why they're actually not conceiving really apply good diagnostics and are able to understand the issue, address the issue, and then they go on to conceive naturally without the need for donor egg. So often, take it with a grain of salt when you hear it's only about this one thing or, oh no, there's nothing you can do, just keep trying. Usually, that's not the whole story. So let's talk about some kind of general, basic, but really important testing that you need to ensure that you have had done by now. And I mean by now that if you have had more than three conception attempts and you're still not pregnant, then it's going to be really important to make sure that you've got these covered and probably even much more. But the reality of it is that without these being addressed, so these basic things being addressed, we're probably leaving a lot on the table when it comes to female diagnostic tests. Now, I will be doing another video probably tomorrow about male diagnostic tests and the basic things that need to be addressed because often either a semen analysis is not done or only a semen analysis is done with the basic parameters being addressed and not very much more. But we'll leave that for another video that I'll do on male diagnostic and basic, ma basic male di diagnostic factors. Today I wanna to talk about female and I'm really going to be talking very specifically about the f fertility diagnostics. When it comes to miscarriage, it's, it's a whole lot of things that could be getting in the way, as well as of course with fertility, but there are some basic things that if we don't have in place, we probably are never going to conceive and we won't necessarily, if we don't have those ruled out, we won't really know why. In saying that, general health is going to be vital and I'm not really going to cover here all of the things that you need to look at for general health diagnostics that relate to fertility because that would be things like kidney function, liver function, whole blood, you know, full blood counts, things like, um, you know, what is happening with lipids and met metabolic hormones, all of those different factors. In, including thyroid, by the way, which is a huge, it has a huge impact in terms of miscarriages and also the ability to conceive. But those things, let's just put them aside for a moment and imagine that in a good full workup, those things would have been covered by your doctor. There, it's not always the case, so be aware of that because that's something that also you may need to address. But when it comes to fertility diagnostics, you absolutely want to make sure that you have your FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, LH, estrogen and progesterone, as well as potentially anti-malarian hormone, which is AMH, which is a proxy marker for ovarian reserve. You wanna have those tests, those kind of basic tests done on day two of the cycle for baseline, okay? No later than day three, because otherwise you're going to end up with different results that aren't really relevant and they're not gonna tell us very much in terms of your particular situation. Progesterone, you may want to repeat that again seven days post ovulation and note that I'm saying seven days post ovulation and not day 21 of the cycle because if you have irregular cycles that 
range is going to change in terms of when you actually have to have your test done and that will make a difference in terms of the result. For a woman who has an extended cycle she might get tested on day 21 and show that she has not ovulated because she ovulates on day 33 and on you know day 40 her progesterone will be at the level that it needed to be at day 21. So don't go by day 21 progesterone, go by seven days post ovulation. I have actually put uh, underneath this video a um, segment of five minutes with Gabriella Rosa that I did about how can I track my ovulation and that's going to be really useful because that's also another thing that you want to test ovulation and I talk about what to do and what not to do in terms of that in that video including what blood tests and things that you want you know how you want to correlate your blood tests so go and check that out but in terms of you know again some more of the basics we want to do a pelvic exam we want to make sure that there is an ultrasound that has been done of the pe pelvic cavity as well that's going to help to detect any abnormalities it's going to detect fibroids it's going to detect the variant cysts any kind of major things that we really want to ensure that we don't miss another thing is we want to test for tubal patency now there are two main tests that are done for this you can have an HSG or a high cozy and HSD G is a hysterosalpingogram a high cozy is a hysterosalpingo so, uh, contrast sonography which they're both similar tests in the sense that they both test for tubal patency but one which is the HSD G is done via ultra uh, via x-ray and high cozy is done via ultrasound which is my preference really when it comes to tubal pa uh, patency checking but you know have a chat to your doctor because there are some indica indications for an HSG as well okay the other thing is genetic testing carrier typing making sure that you've got you and your partner and we'll talk about male testing later but certainly the right amount of chromosomes and all of the things that are going to be vital there there are many other immunological and genetic factors that I would be testing if I was treating a couple but these are the basic things that you want to absolutely ensure that you have in place that you've checked and that are cleared with your doctor in terms of your health and fertility to make sure that from there you can do further diagnostics and of course overlay effective treatment until next time bye for now